Clap your hands together properly for Jesus this morning. I'd like us to clap one more time to celebrate our pastor, the man that the Lord has positioned over this province and for his beautiful wife for the great job that the Lord is doing through their hands. Let's clap properly for Jesus and celebrate and celebrate the grace of God over this house. And for yourselves also, let's clap for Jesus and celebrate him for the privilege to be alive and to be available at a time like this. God bless you, everyone. I'm here with my wife and my daughter, who are also part and parcel of Beautiful Gate. We're glad to be back here this morning, and we thank the Lord for the many, many years that we've been together. We had opportunity of being here for close to 10 years. We left two and a half years thereabout. And that's when our senior pastor became the pastor of this church and of the province. And without any doubt, God has been doing great and marvelous things. And to the glory of God, I also bring greetings from Chosen Generation, where we are seated at this moment. And God is good all the time, and he's done great and marvelous things for us. Um, beautiful Gate is still looking beautiful, and the Lord is still doing great things here from all the testimonies that we are having from time to time. Father, we thank you very much this morning for your grace and for your love and for your power and for your divine enablement. You deserve all the glory and the honor we lift our hands in worship and we praise your holy name for you are great. You do miracles so great there is no one like unto thee. There is no one like unto thee. So we bring our worship and our thanks unto you this morning because without you we are nothing. Thank you for all the privileges. Thank you for the year 2021 and for the many blessings you have started to pour out upon your people. We receive fresh blessings this morning. We receive fresh grace today. And we ask that you will speak to your people in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree an open heaven over this meeting this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for answered prayer. When this service is over, we will return all the glory back unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Redeemer and our Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God will say a better amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Please take your seat. The Lord bless you. I'm glad one more time to be here. And I've been asked this morning by our pastor to speak on creativity and innovation. And I'm particularly excited to speak about this because I recall that years ago here, we had what was called the Kingdom Empowerment Service, where we looked at subjects of this nature on Sunday morning in our first services. And I'm grateful to God that that culture continues, and that's why the church is marching on very strongly. Great things the Lord is doing through you. And we trust him to help us even to go further in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look at the book of Exodus 35. Exodus 35 verse 30. Exodus 35 verse 30 to 35. Exodus 35, 30 to 35. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah and he has filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship so if you have a pen and you are underlining or you can underline in your e-bible he has filled him God has filled him with the spirit of God God filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. And what is that for? Verse 32 answers that. And to devise curious works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in the cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of wood, to make any manner of cunning work. And he has put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, them that he filled with wisdom of art to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple, in scarlet and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work. 
That is our first scripture. I read one more and then we'll get into what we have to say for today. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11 and 12 says, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Nothing is to be compared to wisdom. Verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Knowledge of witty inventions. So when you take the first scripture and the second scripture together, this is talking about the wisdom of God to bring about creativity and to bring about innovation. So if you're writing down this morning, the topic for this short exhortation is the spirit of divine creativity and innovation. The spirit of divine creativity and innovation. That's what I'm speaking about this morning. Now, I've chosen to craft it this way because there are different sources of creativity. There are diverse sources where you can find creativity. There are people who tell us that they have to join certain cults. There are people who have to belong to certain associations to be able to draw inspiration. There are people who sing all manner of songs. And when you dig to the foundation of the song, you will find out that these songs are not from God. They are from some other sources. So just as you have the kingdom of light, you also have the kingdom of darkness that has the capacity to endow men and women with wisdom for creativity. But we are speaking about the wisdom that God makes available here this morning. And that's the wisdom that God gave to these two people, um, Bezalel and Aholiab. And from what we read in Proverbs chapter 8, it's talking also about the prudence to create, or the wisdom to create witty inventions. Wisdom to create witty inventions. I submit to you this morning that God himself is the father of creativity and of innovation. God of heaven, the Holy One of Israel, is the father of creativity and innovation. From the beginning of creation, he created. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, Genesis 1, 1 to 3, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In fact, in the first line of the scripture, it was about creation. In the beginning, God created. And verse 2 tells us what was obtaining before God began to create. And the world was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Therefore, if God is a creator, you and I, who are seeds of God, also have embedded in us, a part of God is in us to create. The breath of God is in us to create something new. And from the beginning of the world to the, till today, men have always created. Men have created. What you have here is a work of creation. The cars that we drive on the road are works of creation. Houses that we live in are works of creation. Aircrafts, furniture, all manner of equipment around the world are works of creation from the hands of men. All the resources that God provided under the surface of the earth are raw materials for creation. So man is a part of God. Man has the breath of God in him. Genesis 1.27 tells us, Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. So under the surface of the earth, we have the iron. That iron has become cars that we ride around. Even from the iron, we have the caterpillars. God made the trees in the bush and in the forest. But those trees have become furniture. They've become building that we live in today. The rubber tree has become a raw material for producing rubber and for producing diverse kinds of things. The crude oil that God gave to us underneath the surface of the earth is for plastic and for clothing and for all manner of refined products that we have in the world today. But let's attempt very quickly to define creativity and to separate that from innovation because I'm speaking this morning on creativity and innovation. Let's attempt to do a distinction between the two. Creativity is about discovering. Creativity is about discovering something new, developing something new, deploying existing resources to evolve something new or formerly not in existence. So when you're talking about creativity, you are talking about something anew, never known, never seen. From raw materials, something is evolved. It is bringing into life what you have in your imagination, bringing into reality what you thought about or what you dreamt about. 
That is creativity. Creativity is about invention. It's about ingenuity. It's about originality. It's about inspiration. It's about visioning something that was not there before. On the other hand, innovation is about improving what has been created. So innovation is about improving what has already been created. Many of us are familiar with the typewriter of those days. And in the course of time, typewriter was disappearing. In fact, before it disappeared finally, they had a type of typewriter that was like a computer. It had a screen on the surface. In the past, when we type with those things, you will not see anything on the screen. But before it disappeared finally, they created one in between. So as you are typing on the typewriter, you are also seeing what you are typing on the screen. And you can make certain corrections before you finally print. And as time went by, the keys for the typewriter disappeared and a proper computer evolved. And then we had that very bogus computer. Many of us who went to the university, you recall, uh, the punch card when I was learning Fortran and COBOL in those days. Many of us learned Fortran and COBOL. Those were the computer languages, programming languages of those days. And then we had punch card in our university in those days where we would go and, and they had just one or two in that big computer science place. I mean, and in the course of time, some people felt, okay, we could have computers that can be on the table. I remember I bought one computer in those days, uh, Compact Presario. That was the name of the Compact. I can't forget. I mean, this is 2021, and I bought this around 1999 or so. It was a big bogus thing on my table in my house. It was a precious instrument with a bogus back, like the television that you and I used to have in our houses in those days. If anybody still has that television in his house right now, I'm sure you are living in, uh, uh, in the past. How many of you still have that kind of television? I'm not sure you have it again, because the world has moved to something like this, with better quality. And then it moved from those bogus things, now we have the laptop. The laptop sometimes could even be too big for you, now we have the iPad. There are students in the university who don't even have laptop, but they have iPad, and that's what they use to do the work, to show you how life has evolved over time. But the original creation was the computer itself, but there are several innovations that have followed thereafter. Something evolved, but certain other things have happened thereafter, which are works of innovation. So innovation is about improving what has been created. It is in the same family of words like to renovate, to recreate, to modernize, to modify, to enhance. It is about reproducing what has been produced to become more useful and more practical. Creativity is the ability to transcend traditional ideas, rules, patterns, relationships, or the like and to create meaningful new ideas, forms, methods, interpretation. That's creativity. Innovation is to make changes in something established, especially introducing new methods, ideas, or products from some of these things. When you look to your left and to the right, you will see many people who could not innovate, even though they had a creation, but they couldn't innovate on what was created, and they disappeared. Kodak camera is a good example. When we were growing up, you remember that we had people coming to see you in party, and then they take your photograph on the spot, and then they go to one corner, and then they you know, swipe the thing like that, and then your photograph comes out. And in the course of time, if I will go and at another time we had this one, we go and buy film from the store. But today, where are some of those companies that made some of those important discoveries or creations of the past? They've all disappeared. Even your Nokia telephone, Blackberry, for example, that many of us used and we thought would be the best and will continue to be there. But with the passage of time, because they couldn't innovate, they have disappeared. Let's come to more practical things. The difference between one country and the other is in the level of their creativity and in the level of their innovation. The difference between countries is about creativity and innovation. The difference between the USA and China and Japan and the rest of the world is the massive explosion of creativity and innovation. And they have evolved superpowers of the world because of their tireless creative efforts and innovation. The difference between America and Africa, and Nigeria precisely, it is in the slowness of our creativity and our innovation. So the reason for Africa's position today is our inability to drive creativity and innovation rapidly and to commercialize the innovations that we bring about. Let's go to the banking sector very quickly. The difference between Bank A and Bank B is purely innovation and creativity. The basic function of a bank is to take your money from you and to keep it there. And to give it to the other man who requires that money to do what? To do business. And they make, they make money by helping you to keep money or to loan you money to go and do your business. 
but because some have become more creative and more innovative than others, they are at the top of the ladder. So in Nigeria, you mentioned about five banks, Fugaz. You have First Bank, you have UBA, you have Guarantee Trust Bank, you have Access Bank, and you have Zenith Bank, which is the father of them. And when you go and check across these five banks, you will see that they are the banks that have the best of innovation that appeals to the modern day people and around the world, and they can compete with the rest of the world. Let's come to the church environment. The difference between church A and church B is in the level of their creativity and their innovation. The difference between the RCCG and other churches of the world, of course, will be measured also by creativity and innovation. Somebody will say, yes, it's about the anointing, and I agree. I agree with you. I'm not doubting the power of the anointing. Anointing is powerful. Anointing is great. Can open the eyes of the blind, can get the blind to see, can get the lame to walk, can walk all manner of wonders and miracles. But if you study the Bible very well, you will see that there are about nine core messages of the scripture. You can do your research and find them. There are about nine core messages. The blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, baptism in the Holy Ghost, baptism in the speaking of tongues, and the belief in the, whole, in the coming, second coming of Jesus Christ. There are about nine of those things which we preach from church to church to church to church. That's what all the churches preach. There is no church that is outside of those nine major pillars of Christianity as they can be called. But the difference in the advancement or the success between one and the other is in the level of their creativity and innovation. The artist is taught that there must be one thing to group one group of people and to be another to another group of people. And they have fulfilled the words of the scripture, which is the same thing that Paul was speaking about in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 17 or so. Paul speaking there, he said, I have become more things. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 9, 20, he says, and unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law, and that I might gain them also that are under the law, to them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, to, gain, to get what? That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as, I, as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. So, what does that mean? You are rich, there is a place for you here. You are poor, there is a place for you here. You are high, there is a place for you here. You are low, there is a place for you here. It doesn't matter where you come from, what language you speak, there is a place for you here. It is the diversity of the creativity that the church has brought to bear that has given it the relevance that it has today. Somebody please put your hands together for Jesus for what he's done for us as a people. Why do you need creativity? I have very little time, but I'll try and go through this as quickly as possible. Why do you need creativity and innovation mindset? Why do you need that mindset? Why do you need to grow what is called your innovation capital, whether at organizational level or at a personal level? Why do I need it? Why is this important for me? Why should this be important to you this morning? Number one, because it is the wise thing and the prudent thing to do. Proverbs 8 verse 12. I wisdom do I with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. It is the wise thing to do. It is the prudent thing to do. It is a good decision for today and for your future. Why is that important? So that you don't go into extinction before your due time. So that you don't disappear before your due time. Churches that have refused to innovate, they've disappeared. One powerful man of God with a great anointing but not innovating. It's a matter of time. Energy will go down and the church will disappear. Number two reason why you need creativity and innovation mindset to enable you gain more relevance, gain more significance, and make more impact in your God-given assignment. I repeat that for emphasis. To enable you and I to gain more relevance, to gain more significance, and make more impact in our God-given assignment. Let me put that differently. To expand your sphere of influence, you want to expand your sphere of influence, then you must be creative and you must be innovative. To expand your sphere of influence. Number three, why, in fact, somebody will argue that, oh, what can I do in a place where I've been sent to, in the company where I work? You and I are apostles in the field, in the marketplace. In fact, the meaning of the word apostle is apostolus, which means somebody who is sent to break new grounds. So you are also sent into the marketplace to break new grounds in the assignment that God has committed into your hands. And I pray for you this morning that you will not fail God 
in, this, in his calling over your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, why do I need innovation and creativity? Because in today's world, one size does not fit all. In today's world, one size doesn't fit all. Through creativity, you can capture more opportunities. One size cannot fit all. Not all human beings are the same. We are different from place to place, from person to person, and one size cannot fit all. So you need diversity of creation and innovations to capture more men onto Christ and for your respective endeavors in life. Number four, creativity and innovation are the tools for geometric or exponential growth. Are you looking for growth in your business? Then creativity and innovation are the answers to geometric and exponential growth. They are the root of mighty works. They are the root. They are the root of exploits in the kingdom of God. Number five, why do I need creativity and innovation? To enhance the diverse skills of those who are around me. There are all manner of talents in this church. How do we enhance their talents? It is through creativity and innovation. Talents abound. And if you don't harvest them, they are lost and they are wasted. Number six, why do I need creativity and innovation. For fruitfulness across the various seasons of my life. So that I can be fruitful across the various seasons of life. There are seasons of sowing, seasons of farming, seasons of waiting, seasons of growth, seasons of harvest, seasons of abundance. We all will go through these seasonal switches in our lives, in our business, and in our career. Creativity will help you to sustain your fruitfulness. Number seven, which is where I will try to stop this morning. Why do I need creativity? Creativity and innovation are the major avenues or platforms for wealth creation and preservation of your wealth. Creativity and innovation are the avenues by which you get wealth and by which you preserve them. You can check this online. Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and Google, in terms of their annual revenue, they are bigger than the whole of Africa. Africa has 54 countries. These four companies have bigger size of revenue. Go and check. And those four companies are some of the most creative, some of the most innovative country, companies across the world. In 2018, Africa's GDP was 2.2 trillion US dollars. And these four companies were worth 2.9 trillion US dollars. The whole of Africa, 2.2 trillion. Four companies in America, 2.9 trillion US dollars. And these companies didn't exist 40 years ago. They are young companies that existed or that came into being only recently. And creativity is not only about computer because somebody can say, oh, is it just about computing? Creativity is not only about computing innovation. It's about the concepts. It's about the ideas. It's about the science. It's about the arts. It's about the managerial capabilities and your personal leadership styles. Um, because I don't have a lot of time. Maybe in the second service, as God gives me grace, I will go into the second part of this. What skills do I require to become creative? And how do I teach my children to be creative? I'll be looking at that by the grace of God in the second service this morning. I'd like us to rise up on our feet this morning and just wave our hands unto the Most High and thank Him for the spark of life that He has given to us this morning. I wanted to thank him this morning and just give him praise for all that he has done. Let's appreciate him this morning. One of the prayers you must pray this morning is that God open my eyes of understanding. Enlighten my eyes of understanding. Release unto me wisdom for creativity and for invention. Somebody lift your voice this morning and just talk to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I receive a spark of life from the Holy Spirit this morning to be baptized with the spirit of wisdom to be baptized with the spirit of knowledge, with the spirit of creativity. Let my hands begin to bring about new things in the name of Jesus. Because through this, you will have more influence, you will win more souls to Christ, and you will go from here to the uttermost part of the earth, even like God has ordained for you. Lift your voice this morning and just talk to God and say, Father, I receive this morning baptism of fresh wisdom, wisdom, wisdom from above. Release unto me new, fresh ideas from heaven. I cannot go to any other source to receive this money, but I can receive only from you. You have all the wisdom in heaven, wisdom to succeed in my area of calling, 
Have you been called into banking? Called into business? Called into ministry? What have you been called into this morning? Into music? Into acting? What have you been called into this morning? Why don't you ask God this morning? Let there be a release of fresh grace, fresh wisdom, fresh knowledge, fresh understanding. Let the Spirit of God speak fresh unto me this morning. The Spirit of God will speak fresh ideas into you this morning. Anything and anything that has hindered you from now for making geometric growth in what God has committed into your hands, why don't you ask the Lord this morning to take them away from you? Lord, break every barrier. Let the scales over our eyes be removed. Let the scales over the hearts of your people this morning be removed. Let our hands be anointed afresh this morning to bring about new things. Let our ears hear fresh word this morning. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let us hear something new this morning, something practicable, something that will change our world, change our systems, change our country. Somebody is here this morning that God wants to anoint specially for great things in this generation. Why don't you talk to God this morning? Lord, use me. I'm available. I'm available this morning. Lord, use me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I'm available to bring about change that you have in mind for this church, for this country, for this city, for the world. I'm available this morning. Let that be a release of your power in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is inhibiting me from hearing and seeing clearly, let them be wiped away by the power that is in the blood of Jesus this morning. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody lift your voice and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will ride. I will ride on invisible wings of invention and creativity by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Somebody make that confession and make that declaration right now. I will ride on the wings by the power of the Holy Ghost. I will ride on the wings of invention in the name of Jesus. I will ride. It's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. Lord, let your spirit be available to make us to ride on the wings of wisdom, on the wings of creativity and of knowledge and of power. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord God of heaven, we thank you very much this morning. Thank you because you are the father of light in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. When you release your light into our lives, it's capable of changing everything, changing the world. That's what you did at the beginning. You said, let there be light. And through that light, you created the heavens and the earth. Lord, everyone here this morning deserves a spark of your power, a spark of your grace to bring about a new change in our world, in our lives. Lord, release that grace this morning again in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are people who are here this morning who have not given their lives unto you. What a great privilege that they have today. Lord, we ask that even as we round up the service, they will surrender themselves unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. None of us here will miss the rapture, will miss heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for answered prayer. Blessed be God forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.